talk about these protests that have been going on. Um, we, uh, we saw a bunch of them uh, happen all across the country this week. Um, uh, and primarily, I'm trying to think of how exactly I want to phrase this to start. Look, I just think these protests are misguided. Um, I think they're incredibly misguided protests. I think that it is uh, rooted out of fear and misunderstanding of the situation um, and really misunderstanding what, what, what the point of moving forward would be. Um, and a lot of these protests are like reopen the country, reopen my state kind of thing, uh, right? Like so we saw in, in Michigan, everybody was like reopen Michigan and Pennsylvania. They're like reopen Pennsylvania. So there's a bunch of states that did that. And everybody kind of was like, oh, this is, you know, this is about freedom. Um, and that's what they're claiming, right? This is a, tri a, a, a infringement of their civil liberties. It's infringement of their rights as Americans, which is so funny. It's, it's so interesting to me because, you know, when Edward Snowden revealed, and these are the same people that don't consider Edward Snowden to be a fucking hero, right, is... When Edward Snowden revealed what the NSA was doing about how they're using our, uh, our, our, our technology and our camera to spy on us and collect data, you know, and the NSA was like, well, we're just kind of doing it to do it. And it's just like they fucking didn't say a word about it. They were just like, yeah, you got to follow what the government says. If you don't have anything to hide, what, what are you worried about, right? And, and it's like, no, that's a violation out of our rights, of a, a constitutional right. That's a Fourth Amendment violation. And those same people are out there going, our rights are being trifled and we should not, we should go back to work. And we have a right to work. And it's like, mm, okay. And that's, that's a, a, a lot of it. That's where a lot of it's starting. Right, they're calling for like a return to work. They want everybody to be employed again. Um, they, they want to go back to work because it's their freedom and their right to work. Sure. Uh, do you have the freedom to do whatever job that, uh, that you would like to? Yes, absolutely. Do you have the right um, to pursue the work that you would like to? Of course. I'm not disagreeing with any of that. Now, what I will say is uh, that just because sometimes you have the freedom or the right to do something, sometimes you shouldn't do that. You don't need to exercise your freedoms and rights all the time. Like, there, like it is my freedom of expression if I wanted to, to go into a Victoria's Secret and rub my balls on all the mannequins. It doesn't mean that I should. It, it's, it's there, but it doesn't mean that I should. Everybody would love to go back to work. Right? People are kind of going a little loopy doopy right now, and it's only been a month. It's been a month. It's been a month of this thing. Um, I'm not going to be back on the road till. So even if they do like lift the lockdown ban or what have you, tomorrow. Like if they were just like, well, we're done. Back to everybody back to work on tomorrow, and you know, I'm still out of work till the end of May. I'm I'm not going to be back on the road till June. And I would love to do that. I would love to go back to on tour. Nothing would make me happier. That's why I like touring as much as I do. You know, I, I love being on the road. I love meeting all those people. I love hanging out with my friends across the country that I've made over the years. I love going back to specific venues because those venues feel like home. You know, the Robin Theater, the Church of Satire, fucking Teehee's Comedy Club that I was just at in March, a Blank Slate. Shakespeare's I mean the list goes on and on about venues that I show up and I genuinely feel like I'm home I'm ge I, they, they treat you like your family and I miss that shit of course I miss that shit and I have the freedom to do that if I wanted to I could get in my car and go to Cleveland or Detroit or fucking you know Columbus, whatever. 
But does it make sense to do that right now? It doesn't. Who's going to show up if they're all scared of a, during a pandemic, which, you know, it's, it's like that, that is kind of a scary time. It can be a scary time. Um, but it doesn't make any sense. So freedom without logic is irresponsible. And I don't think there's any logic to this action. I think this is a misguided, scared, I don't want to be with myself. I don't want to get introspective with myself kind of reaction. Um, and really this call that people want to go back to work because there's a lot of people that are like, this is how I feed my family and I haven't been able to do that, right? Uh, one, it shows just how obsessed with work America is. Rather than, rather than sitting back and going, okay, you know what? I have this time. I'm not one of these people that can uh, find an alternative way to do my job. I'm not one of these people that can do my job online, like hairdressers and you know stuff like that. Is like, yeah, I get it. How are you? Who's who? What virtual way to get a fucking haircut are you gonna do? Right? Like, so either you have to get a mask and go to somebody's house, and they have to be comfortable with you coming into their house. And give them haircuts or you have to bring them over to your house and they have to be comfortable coming to your house um, to, to get these haircuts and so on and so forth. Right. I'm just using haircuts as an example because that's there's there's been a lot of the people that are like, I, I want to I want the freedom to get my haircut. And it's just like, all right, fucking then. I don't know. Ask your wife or whatever. Um, this is the moment where you could sit and go, what do I actually want to do with my life? Who am I as a person? What's my passion? How do I find fulfillment? How do I find joy? And how do I make my fulfillment and joy my job, my occupation? So that work doesn't have to be this bad word. It doesn't have to be this dredge that, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I got to fucking sit in my car and I got to deal with all this fucking traffic and I'm doing, I'm going the same goddamn route. And I'm going and sitting at the same fucking cubicle, punching the same goddamn clock, doing the same goddamn thing every day, having the same inane conversations at lunch, and then going home and sitting in that same fucking traffic to go home and eat dinner with my same fucking friend. Like, that monotony doesn't need to be what work is. It can be about fulfillment. And instead of taking the opportunity to try to find that, they're out there saying, "Give us, get us back to status quo." It this this doesn't need to be about your need for work to make money. Sure, I mean making money from your work is amazing, and especially when you get to make money from your work that you are passionate about, that you're excited about, and that brings you happiness and fulfillment is incredible. But, you know, if, if that's all it is, then I think we're missing the point here. This, j these jobs shouldn't be just about what is going to be profitable. It's about what makes you happy. Ask that question for once. Do a little bit of self-exploration. What did you always want to do? Why, and, and why didn't you get the opportunity to pursue it? And, it? and isn't this the time to pursue it? And the bigger question is, do you want to be happy? Maybe you don't. Maybe you, maybe you like being miserable because at least that misery brings you a profit. And that's all your life is ever going to be about. And if that's it, then that's it. You discovered that about yourself. But I would wager to bet that it's probably not. I would wager to bet that it's probably not. And happiness is a choice that you can make. It's up to you to do what you need to do to make yourself happy. I wouldn't be doing these videos if I didn't enjoy doing these videos. I genuinely enjoy having conversations like this. Um, you know, I genuinely enjoy thinking about this stuff. I gen and I genuinely enjoy sharing these ideas and thoughts with other people in hopes that maybe there's something else that they will share to, to maybe, you know, enlighten somebody, maybe help somebody think a little bit differently. I, I love do, doing this sort of stuff. I, I, I enjoy finding comedic avenues in all these sort of dark shit.
That's the choice that you can make now. Fighting for the right to work, fighting for the right to do what? Become another employee so that these corporations can fucking, you know, pay you pittance? That's, that's what you're asking to do. That's what status quo was. Reopen the country to what means? To what means? What are we reopening the country to? To go back to the same shit that we've been doing before all this. The same shit that got us in trouble here in the first place. Why are we interested in taking that step backwards just to arrive at the problem again? What is the purpose of that? What is the point of that? There is none, in my opinion. It's an illogical move. What's the, what's the phrase, there's no other way but forward? Is that a phrase? I don't know if that's a phrase. Let's make that a phrase. There's no other way but forward. So let's take a forward momentum. Let's not go back to the way things were. Let's figure out what these protests should be about. Let's, let's, let's add freedom with logic and go forward in figuring out how to protest with, with, with logic in mind. What's the thing we should be looking at right now? I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is small businesses got nothing. They launched a small business loan uh, for, and it, there was $350 billion um, that was set up. And uh, as far as I can tell, nobody got that fucking loan. People applied for it, but they didn't fucking get it. Small businesses, which are deemed to be 500 employees or less. Uh, Olive Garden doesn't need a fucking loan. They already got one. There's already a corporate bailout. They gave over $5 trillion. Subway doesn't need a loan. Cheesecake Factory, they don't fucking need loans. The small pizza shop that is that is struggling to get by right now, they need a loan. The small venue needs a loan. The, the 50 seat venue that operates because people like me show up and I can maybe bring 10 people, they need a loan to continue operating, continue paying their employees. And they didn't get one. Where, where are these sons and daughters of liberty protesting that shit? Where are they in that? Instead of saying, get us back to work. Get us back to work. Let's open up these businesses that nobody wants to come to because they're too scared. Why aren't you saying, why the fuck didn't you do what you promised us you were going to do? Why are you looking at the government going, wait a minute, you guys fucking said you were going to give small businesses, 500 employees or less, these, these loans to help them keep going. And, and you said that if nobody gets fired, if they don't have to lose any staff because they would get these loans, then they don't have to worry about repaying them or they'll get it at a reduced interest rate or something. Why didn't they get that? You had no problem giving $4 trillion, $5 trillion to corporations, a Wall Street slush fund. We have people trying to use unemployment and not being able to access that. Small businesses aren't getting what they need. For everybody sits there and says, well, socialism, it doesn't work. No, 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 this is capitalism. This is not socialism. This is capitalism making sure that social programs are ineffective. There's no reason why they can't make this work. There's no reason why that website can't work. There's no reason why you can't use the census information. You can't use the Postal Service information to get checks out to people. There's no reason for that. That's not capitalism. That's not socialism. That's capitalism. That's capitalism setting itself so that, so that you know, the, it funnels all the money to the top. It's another fucking notion to try to push trickle down down our throats for no reason. Where are the sons and daughters of liberty protesting that? Why aren't there signs out there saying stop fucking trickle down? Stop trickling shit down. We need help. We need assistance. How about a trickle up? 
How about a trickle up economy? Where are the signs saying that? Give me liberty or give me death. Great, you're gonna die. Because guess what? Just because you want to open up the state of Pennsylvania, just because you want to open up the Michigan, doesn't mean that the citizens of Michigan are going to come support your business. So you're just going to stay open. Risking what? You're not risking anything. Your People's health. I mean, there's nothing preventing you right now from going into an empty shop. If you're a hairdresser and you're like, this is how I make my money, okay, open up your barbershop, see who shows up. Very few people are going to show up. You're going to have a bunch of these people that protest maybe show up, but then they're done. How many haircuts can these people really get? It's, an Ill, it's not logical. It's not logical. Going, having a protest and go back to the fucking status quo doesn't make any goddamn sense. The status quo is what got us into this mess in the first place, that got us to this economic condition in the first place. So why would you want to go back to a system that basically preaches the same fucking thing? Why isn't the protest that, that it's been a month and this government hasn't done a goddamn thing to help the American people? $1,200 stimulus check is all they gave us. To some of us, not all of us. <laughs> some of us can't get the $1,200 stimulus check. Some of the people that make cash, some of the people that are the most poor, some of the people that you know don't make enough income to, to pay taxes don't get that $1,200. The, the, the people that are most vulnerable don't get it. And fucking... <laughs> This is twelve hundred dollars is supposed to last ten weeks. <laughs> That's what Steve Mnuchin said. They're like, oh, it's gotta last. It'll last tw ten weeks. Ten weeks. We figure, you know, the poor's, uh, you know how they're stupid with money. You get how dumb the poor's are with money. Um, we'll say ten weeks. Uh, that's a hundred and twenty dollars a week. Uh, you know. Uh, if they if they run out of food, what I hear is there's a lot of garbage cans. There's a lot of garbage cans out there with some food uh, that uh, that us rich people graciously throw away so that the poor can go hunting in the garbage cans. And uh, and you know we will let them scour our garbage for a very small nominal fee. That way the money lasts for uh, ten weeks. I guarantee you my garbage can is cheaper than the grocery store. I can guarantee that. This fucking out of touch lunatic. It's like it's gonna last ten weeks. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All this is really showing more and more to me with with this conversation surrounding, uh, oh, we want to go back to work, and you know everything that's happening with how the government's not really helping the working class people. You know, a, a, they're they're putting more money into the corporate slush fund. We need a UBI. We need a universal basic income. I think this pushes us more in that direction, that it proves more and more that we need a universal basic income. If we had a universal basic income, I don't think these people would be out there um, yelling and screaming, putting, putting themselves at risk and other people at risk for, I think, virtually nothing. For, for you to sit there and say, I want to go back to work. If, for the sake of easy math, even if it was $2,000 a month, which is what Ro Khanna and a couple other people are proposing, uh, which is like, we're listening. That's basically how the Democrats are, are running through it. That's what both parties are running through, both the Democrats and the Republicans are just like, we're listening, but we're not going to do it. We're just going to listen. So two thousand dollars would be f roughly five trillion total, which is the exact amount that they just made up out of thin air for corporate interests for as a Wall Street slush fund, and they just gave it out, no questions asked, uh, no delays, no forms to fill out, nothing. They could have easily done that for the American people, and that could have trickled up. 
If there was $2,000 a month coming into your pockets as an American citizen, um, I don't think that we would be seeing these protests right now. I think these people are scared. I think these people are um, uncertain of what the future holds, and they are using this guise of rights and liberties and freedoms as a way to kind of push back against that fear. The fear of not knowing when they're going to get back to work. If they had that money, there would be less concern of where that food is going to come from. That their work connected to income and profit that's currently not there. If there was, if there was a UBI that they could feed their family and there'd be less people protesting out there. If they had a UBI, they could also buy a dictionary so that they could learn how to spell certain words. Because uh, I'm looking at some of these signs going, I, I, how is, aren't you supposed to know English? That's what you fucking yelled at me all those years as an immigrant, is you gotta speak English. And it's like, I is. Why don't you learn how to speak English? When you learn how to speak English, then you can yell at me about learning to speak English. You know, if they had a UBI, they could afford a, a, a dictionary, you know? You don't even need to buy it. You can technically just go to mediumwebster.com and look up words. But they, but they would then be able to think about what they want to do with their lives, right? They could, be, they could be a little bit more introspective. They could find a new purpose for themselves in this current situation. Maybe it's going to, going and, be, you know, uh, joining a mutual aid. Maybe it's being a little bit more active in your community. That's what we need to be protesting. We need to be protesting this misuse of the funds, the misuse of restabilizing an economy during a global pandemic. And there are people that are doing that. We talked about rent strikes last week, rent freezes, um, and the LA Tenants Union, uh, and this was reported by Ron Placone, and there was, so, so Ron Placone reported this, he did a video about it, he talked about it in his show, and that's how I found out about it. And then I tried to see if there was any coverage by any sort of corporate. And there's one. There was one, one piece of news that actually covered this shit. And it was uh, ABC or some stupid shit like that. And they just were just like, these people protested in their cars. Which they did. They, they practiced social distancing guidelines. Um, they were in their cars and uh, they asked for a rent freeze. They asked to take care of homeless people, uh, possibly open up abandoned hotels, right? Like there's not a lot of people staying in hotels right now. So maybe open up hotels as homeless shelters to make sure that these people have a place to stay, that they are safe. Uh, you know, maybe try to figure out how to fund more money to food shelters. If people had a UBI, they'd be able to donate to, to these things a little bit more. So, you know, so like food banks are running out of food. $2,000 a month plus a rent freeze plus a mortgage freeze. So that means landlords are also taken care of, right? Uh, oh, the third thing I, I forgot to mention too is essentially if you're, if you're a landlord that uh, unethically practices uh, being a landlord, essentially, right? Like if you're just, if you're just like a shitty landlord, then the tenants get to take actions against you um, to to ensure that you know the tenants' rights are taken care of. Um, that you can't just essentially be a slum lord and get away with it. But again, rent freeze, mortgage freeze, uh, both those things happen. Banks are already bailed out; they already have that four trillion dollars. On top of that, they still keep making astronomical amounts of money anyway. So, like, what are you worried about? 
plus the UBI shows up. Now we have a way to sustain the middle class through a crisis, through a pandemic. So let's say this thing lasts beyond May. Let's say this thing goes into June. You know? Americans will be taken care of. And food banks won't run out of food. So they people go back to saying, okay, I have $2,000 a month. I'm going to donate. Um, I'm going to buy an extra $100 worth of food, and I'm going to donate that food to the food bank so that homeless people have something to eat. So that, you know, the hungry kids in low-income families have something to eat. That's a trickle up. You build your foundation. You bail out your foundation. And then you let that stuff guide go up. The fear is, the fear is that coming out of this, more support will go into local, um, more local non-corporate entities, businesses, venues, uh, and the corporate ones won't survive. Good. Sorry. We might see that a universal basic income actually works. It actually doesn't collapse the economy. In fact, it saves it. In fact, it creates a better economy. What we should be protesting is to stop the wheel spinning of unfettered capitalism in the name of freedom. We should be fighting for a better system. We should be fighting for a system that, that legitimately helps people, that doesn't use money as a, as, a, as a limiter, but as a vehicle to help, as a vehicle to, to better humanity. And I don't think capitalism is doing that. There might have been one brief, tiny moment that it did. There might have been this moment where it was like, oh, this thing seems to be awesome. You know, like how when you get something new and it's like, oh, my God, this thing seems so fucking awesome. Right. Like whenever I get a new computer, um, I've had to get three new computers in my lifetime. Right. And that first moment it comes out of the box, you know, you get that new computer smell, which is just toxic chemicals. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, like you just you're just like, this is amazing and it works really well. You know, you can download porn at night, lightning speeds, lightning speeds. I mean, you know, the first thing you do when you open up a computer is just launch seven, eight, 12 porn sites. And just you're just like, how many of these videos can I play all at once? Can I play all? And you can. And then you can. And then over the years, you kind of have to pull back. You know, you only watch maybe four porns at the same time. You know, you got to make an adjustment to it. That's, that's how capitalism is. You know, capitalism is, is like when it came out of the box, you know, it was like, this smells really good, but it was just coal ash uh, and, and fossil fuel toxins that were coming out. And, and, you were, and everybody was like, this is great. This is awesome. Everything is going really, really well. And then more and more, you know, uh, the, the, more and more as capitalism kept building and the rules for capitalism got taken down and more became unfettered, the more we kept thinking about freedom, 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 and the more, you know, chains we kept taking out of it, the more it restricted us. We took the chains off capitalism and put them on ourselves. And now we have to make an adjustment to learn how to walk with the chains. We should be fighting for a better system, not asking to go back to the same ones. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you are new to this channel, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notifications when uh, I put up new videos. I'm going to be putting up videos every single day, so there's going to be a ton of content coming out on this channel. Uh, there's going to be storytelling, uh, commentary about the media, uh, historical commentary, philosophical commentary, all surrounding uh, stand-up comedy. If you, if you like comedic commentary about these topics, then this is the channel for you. 
Uh, and if you uh, come to the channel often and you haven't subscribed, what, 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 what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Get, get, get subscribed to this. Come, come hang out with us. <laughs> but uh, for more information about me, you can go to my website, uh, ramanoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, while you're there, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums, which if you snag them from Bandcamp are available as pay what you want, which means that they're uh, available for free. Uh, you can check out past videos, you can check out past podcasts, and uh, you can donate if you have the ability to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. You can donate directly on my website and become a sustaining member directly on my website. And Or you can see how, you know, the various different ways that you can make a donation. And you can also find out about live stand-up comedy events. Well, live-ish stand-up comedy events. I'm going to be doing uh, a test show on Zoom. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. They are free, and there's only 10 spots available. This is going to be a test show to find out, you know, what format's going to work, if there are technical difficulties that I need to figure out, and then figuring out uh, what consistent day to try to do um, these Zoom shows. I'll probably do a couple of them uh, while we are uh, currently in the quarantine situation. So that is available. Uh, the tickets for that are available right now. There's only 10 spots available. Uh, so make sure that you grab them um, before they're all gone. And then once we decide the date for the first official live-ish stand-up <laughs> comedy Zoom show, the virtual stand-up comedy show, uh, there will be um, about 15 tickets available for the first one, uh, and then we'll we'll go from there, and we'll see, see what happens from there, uh, so grab those tickets and come hang out with us uh, on the Zoom, uh, like I said, make sure that you're subscribed, make sure that you hit that like, make sure that you share this out, get the word out about these videos, and... Uh, and you can go to my website to find out more stuff. Uh, till the next video, take it easy.